All right, Cindy in Missouri, you are live with Eric and V. Hi, Hi. Cindy. Oh, first of all, I just want to say congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you too. Um, and I've been watching the show pretty much since the first time it came out, and I really Woo-hoo. appreciate your insights. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, and what I've been struggling with is that um, growing up, I was in the Christian church and went, you know, with my grandmas and things like that. Got baptized and then went away from the church for a while mm-hmm. as an older teen, young in my 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, got married and then we started going to more of like a Church of God of Prophecy. Ooh, um, okay. You know, like speaking in tongues and Holy Spirit. And, Ooh, getting you know, slain like in the spirit. That. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. You know, and I, I really felt like a lot of joy going, you know, through that process. Sure. Um, unfortunately, I started going because my, this is my ex-husband, he, he said, well, um, you might go to hell, but my children and I are going. So I was like, oh, well, I better go to church. Yeah. <laughs> so it started off weird. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I met a lot of good people. Mm-hmm. Um, during that time, I, my um, brother and his girlfriend went to prison, and they had two kids. So we started raising those two children along with our two children. And we had people bringing us clothes food, beds, Mm -hmm. you know, like, and just amazing outpouring of love, like you were saying earlier, loved on, yeah, you know, and now that I'm questioning, you know, it's hard to discount all of that that happened when, you know, those people were strongly influenced, like, I think in a positive way, yeah, to help members you know but then i've also seen the other side because my niece that i raised um she is um non-binary and then my daughter has um said that she's bisexual and then so like they've had some struggles yeah you know when we were going to church that i didn't even realize was going on at the time yeah so you know i saw i saw both sides and now that i'm on the other side like questioning trying to figure out what to do like how do you um keep those things positive but move on and say you know like the power behind it wasn't necessarily real yeah oh man that is a that, that is a big one um I've got a whole spiel, but if you want to go first, V, you go right ahead. <laughs> I think we probably have the same spiel. Yeah, go but for it. the the thing that I would say is I heard two very different things just now from you, Cindy. And on the one hand, I heard, well, you might want to go to hell, but my kids and I are going to be going to church, and you joined. Because you felt pressured, either because you actually believed in a hell and were scared of that, or because you felt like you were going to lose the ability to spend this time and and this 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 importance with your the rest of your family, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. then on the other side, you have this awesome community of people banding together and and helping in a in a time of need and a time of crisis. So for me, I say we put both of those on the table and say maybe this is just what humans do, right? And it doesn't lose any power one way or the other if there isn't an actual divine reason or a supernatural push behind it. This is how humans act when they have a reason to come together and join together in a community, right? There are some people who will be there because they're afraid of what's going to happen if they're not there. They're afraid that they might be shunned. They're afraid they might not have their the, the support and the safety that comes with it. And that might be their motivation for joining. Other people might really want to be a part of something beautiful and good and support each other. And that might be their motivation for joining or for staying. But each person is coming into that community with their own motivations, their own hopes, their own fears, their own dedication to what they want to do for that community or what they want to take from that community. And 
none of the individual actions, whether that's threatening someone with hell or giving someone who needs it a bed or a, a hot meal, loses any weight or any importance because it's the individual taking action rather than a higher power enforcing it. I mean, yeah. here's an example, right? You, you, you said you're raising your niece, correct? Is it your yeah. niece? Yeah, I, um, she's 18 now, so I don't necessarily have to raise her anymore. But okay, but, 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 but you've raised her. Okay. Yes. So if I said I'm going to give you a cupcake for doing it, mm -hmm. awesome. If I took away that cupcake, would you be like, ah, well, it's not worth raising my niece now, right? No, no. <laughs> I, I see your point. I, I, I mean, the, the the funny thing is, you're absolutely right, V. It is this. Um, it, it it is something that people do. It's not why or um, how can we move forward without some you know deistic mandate. Mm -hmm. It's that. We do. We act morally. And so it's not a question of can we act morally, but it's a, it's a question of we are acting morally. Why? Why do we do this? Right. And it makes a lot more sense when you take personal responsibility for it because if you don't, you could just be a sociopath that's just following the rules. I debated a guy, uh, uh, Dr. David Wood, who had said that he has absolutely no moral issues with and has gone to jail for attempted murder. And the only reason, the only thing that's stopping him from, you know, those violent tendencies is a religious mandate that he doesn't. That's terrifying. Well, yeah. Frank and, Turek just tweeted, if you have no objective morality, and in his words, that means God, then love is no better than murder. But and, and, and you have to wonder, is like, okay, are you saying that you mentally equate love and murder on the same level? Is is that but of course not. Of course not that's not right. what they mean. You know, we behave this way because we're a social species, because we evolved to be this way, because we were raised to to take care of each other and to um to be empathetic. Those things are ingrained in us. And so don't, don't take away all of the good. Don't discount all of the good that you experienced. Yeah. Just know that that religion doesn't have a stranglehold on it. That religion is not the only place where you can find community. That's the problem. Right. That's, right, that's what I'm finding now more is like now that I'm finding more communities, even just like your call-in show here, like there are people out there that don't have to be driven by a higher power in order to act no you know, morally and honestly you i would know, say that in a good way yeah absolutely honestly i would say that most of the people that went to the church that i went to went because they were a part of a community mm -hmm. you know not everybody had super strong views about the bible those people became church elders but not everybody was a church elder a lot of people just went because that's where they found community we just need to create other spaces for people to be able to find that community because we often find that in religious environments dogmatically uh we we you know people are kicked out people are discriminated against and so we just need to create other options for them but I, it is absolutely acceptable to appreciate and and internalize that, hey, you know what? You belonged to a community that supported you and, um, you know, you did a lot of good and you saw a lot of good done. That's awesome. Just just think that if yeah. if you if you leave your faith or if you're I, I think it, it says you're questioning in the notes or you're kind of not you're kind of in a gray space. Is that right? Right. Yes. No matter where you wind up, Cindy, you have the capacity to be a kind, loving, giving, empathetic person. And who you show that compassion to, do you think they're going to care why you did it? Or are no. they going to care that you did it? And, and that's, you know, that's like my drive between all the jobs that I've had. Like, you know, I've worked with people with severe disabilities and I work with people that are jobless and my drive behind that is getting them to a better place, not necessarily because I had a higher power behind me, right. but because you want to see people reach their goals in life. And yeah. That's, that's my thing. I love to watch people get to that point where they have a home and a job and or they've been able to feed themselves even whenever it was with the kids with disabilities. 
Yeah, that's so, wonderful. And I guess that's what um, I had a hard time with um, whenever I first started getting out onto the other side is like now um, what's driving me? <laughs> you. Yeah. So to speak like, and so it makes me feel better when I, like I said, when I see communities like yours and the other atheist communities are saying, it's like you can have this like from your core being. You don't necessarily need some push right, no. from somewhere else. And even if there was a push, I don't think that that would be enough to incentivize you towards or away it, away from it. You know, it, whether or not I give you a cupcake doesn't impact how you feel about yourself as a person when you do good in the world. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So just, 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 just don't, don't think that you need to abandon compassion if you leave your religion. Um, no, yeah, I definitely, so. definitely want to keep going forward with that. I Well, the good I news have, is you um, can. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my, that's my thing. I definitely want to do that. It's just a, you know, and I also I feel bad on the back end that if I were to tell people that I'm questioning or that, you know, that I found some things out that are, that make what they believe in um, not factual anymore, mm -hmm. you know, are they going to then think that I didn't appreciate what they did for me? They and might. That's not true either. Yeah. I, well, but, but here's the thing. Um, you can't take that on. You know, you can't reach into a person's head and make them think a thing about you. And right. I, and you also have to contend with this. Um, so I, I've, I've had people, and I, I'm not saying you're, you're saying this, but it's similar enough that I, would, I want to kind of discourage you away from the line of thinking that takes you to. There are people who would call in before, people I've spoken to before, who said, Hey, Eric, why can't Joe believe in his religion? I mean, he's not going to get it. And even if he does, it's just going to hurt him. And, you know, why, why upset his life if you don't have to? And I think that carries an implicit assumption that Joe's just too dumb to get it. And so you're not even going to give him the opportunity. And that's not oh, yeah, fair. That's not fair to Joe. It's not fair to somebody to remove the choice from them because you don't think they can handle it. Yeah. That's, that's kind of creating this weird nanny type situation where you are, you know, withholding from somebody because you don't view, because you view them as somehow inferior. And you, I, let me, let me tell you, I met a lot of dumb atheists. I'm one of them. Um, <laughs> it's not about intelligence and it's not even about EQ. You know, um, you don't need to have to look for that before you feel comfortable talking to somebody and you don't have to withhold from them because they deserve better. But, um, and we've, we've, uh, we've been on this call for a little bit as this, Cindy, I, hopefully this was helpful. Yes, absolutely. Because it made me see a lot about like, uh, well, I am intrinsically an enabler or codependent so i have to be be careful <laughs> with putting my ideas on other people so yeah you just said something that really helped me a lot thank you i i from somebody else who has uh codependency issues uh it it sucks um i yeah. <laughs> keep, keep up the fight you're doing great <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Absolutely. And if you do come back with other questions, if you start having these conversations with people and they start saying things that, you know, set off new questions in your mind, come back and, and ask us more questions. We'd love to talk to you again. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I'll be watching. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks so much, Cindy. Thank you. Bye. I, I, I got to tell you, um, we get atheists that call in, we get theists that call in. But the idea that you would be questioning and you'd be in that gray area mm -hmm. and you would still want to reach out and talk to people while you're still figuring things out, that takes a level of bravery and just like courage that yeah. is unbelievable. I mean, we have, we have people who are calling in um, who are on both sides of, of the religious aisle. I'm really excited about a couple of them. Um, a lot of them are really entrenched, right? This is what I believe. This is why. But to be in that gray space and go, you know what? I just want to search. I just want to learn. Yeah. Good on you. That takes an amazing level of bravery and you should be proud of it.
Anyway. Absolutely. I'll get off my soapbox for now. <laughs> if you want to make Eric's day, just call in with like a really genuine question that might just influence your future and let him talk to you for a little bit. Please, please do. 